All right, buckle up everyone, because today we're diving deep into some seriously wild news surrounding the ending of Amazon Prime's Good Omens. Good Omens, wild ending, I can't wait. And just to be clear, right off the bat, we're going off the rails a bit with this one. What was initially planned as a full third season, boom, is now gonna be a single 90 minute finale episode. And the reason why well, let's just say things got a, a bit complicated, to say the least, involving Neil Gaiman, you know, the show's co-creator. Oh, yeah. Neil Gaiman. Hmm. This is going to be juicy. It is. Before we get into the controversy, though, let's do a super quick recap for anyone who might not be familiar with the show. Good Omens is this awesome fantasy comedy, and it's actually based on the book of the same name written by, yep, you guessed it, Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. A classic. It is. The show follows, basically, an angel named Aziraphale, who's played by the phenomenal Michael Sheen, and a demon Crowley, played by the equally fantastic David Tennant. And they team up, get this, to stop the apocalypse. It's as brilliant as it sounds. Oh, I love those two. Such great chemistry. The best. But okay, so here's where things take a really unexpected turn, and this is what we'll be focusing on today. Neil Gaiman has been hit with some serious accusations, specifically sexual assault allegations from several women. Yeah, I heard about that. Heavy stuff. It is. Now, it's important to state that Gaiman completely denies these allegations, but this situation has definitely sent shockwaves through the entertainment industry. We actually got most of our information for this deep dive from a Tortoise Media podcast, which is where two women initially came forward. They actually shared their stories about their experiences while being, well, in relationships with Gaiman. Right, and this wasn't just a one-time thing, right? I think two more women have come forward since then. Exactly, you're absolutely correct. Two additional women have come forward with their own accusations. And it's had a pretty significant impact, wouldn't you say? I mean, just look at the fallout. Gaiman had to step back from Good Omens production, and several of his other projects have been completely put on hold, some even canceled outright. Yeah, it's been a domino effect for sure. Yeah. Disney's film adaptation of the Graveyard Book. Yeah. Yeah, that's in limbo right now. And then Netflix, they actually went and pulled the plug on Dead Boy Detectives after just one season. It's wild, isn't it? The ripple effects of these kinds of situations. It really is. And, you know, going back to Good Omens, while Gaiman did contribute to the script for this final episode, his production company called The Blank Corporation is completely out of the picture now. A new writer has been brought in to, as they say, honor the original vision. I wonder what that really means, though. I mean, with such a, let's face it, powerful creative force like Gaiman gone, how can it really be the same? It's almost like you have the chef who created this like incredible signature dish. Even if you have the recipe right there in front of you, can someone else really replicate all the like nuances, the flavors, the presentation? It makes you wonder how his absence might affect the show. You know, it's humor, it's heart, especially given everything that's going on, all the sensitive stuff surrounding it now. That is a fantastic point. And honestly, it gets even more complicated when you consider the other players involved. Yeah. Because it's not just about the creative side, right? Mm -hmm. We're talking Amazon, MGM Studios, BBC Studios, and Narrativia, which, by the way, is the company that manages Terry Pratchett's estate and all his creative works. They're all involved in producing this final episode. Oh, wow. Talk about a crowded room. Right. A lot of different voices, a lot of opinions, probably at the table for this one. And it really shows you, I think, the difficulties of adapting something like this, you know, a truly collaborative work. And Good Omens has such devoted fans, it's almost like trying to solve a jigsaw puzzle where some of the pieces have gone missing and everyone has their own ideas about what the final image should look like. Exactly. Right. And hold on to your hats, folks, because here's another fascinating detail. The finale is actually going to mirror, like, directly echo a conversation that Gaiman and Pratchett had about the story 35 years ago. It's almost poetic in a way, considering everything that's happening right now. It is, and it really makes you wonder what the intention is behind it all, you know? Is this their way of staying true to the original spirit of the story? Like some mm -hmm. kind of tribute to their shared vision from all those years ago? Or, and this is a thought, could it maybe be seen as, I don't know, a way to sort of distance the finale from all the controversy around Gaiman, it adds this whole other level of, like, meaning to the ending, doesn't it? It, it totally oh, does. Yeah. It's like now we're all watching with this extra layer of awareness, wondering how everything's going to play out. Absolutely. So let's just do a quick recap before we wrap up. We've got these serious allegations against Gaiman, his subsequent departure from the show, the super condensed finale, and then this whole effort to still try and honor that initial vision for the story. A lot to unpack there. It is. And I think it leaves us with a pretty big question. 
Can the Good Omens finale actually deliver a satisfying conclusion for the fans given, well, everything? What will Gaiman's legacy be? Not just within the show itself, but also, you know, in his broader career. Those are some things I think we'll all be pondering as we wait to see how this all unfolds. It's definitely a conversation worth having. It absolutely is. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive, everyone. Thanks for having me. See you all next time. See ya.